Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com, answering the questions I get from around the world. If you've got a question, go to my website, DinosaurGeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form and submit it. I'll do my best to answer it. I'll try my best, but I get, uh, I get so many, it's really hard to do. So let's just dive into it. Let's see, I'm just gonna randomly click on this page and see who's comes up. This is Hugo from the Netherlands. Hey DG, it's great you're back to answering our questions again. Hey man, glad to be back, Hugo. Wish I had more time to do it, buddy. My question is about the way Spinosaurus killed the T-Rex in Jurassic Park 3. I too don't believe that T-Rex would be defeated by Spinosaurus, but if Spinosaurus would kill T-Rex, would it do it the way it showed in Jurassic Park 3, using its mouth to hold the T-Rex down and then using its arms to snap the neck? Thank you for, for helping me out. Well, you're welcome, Hugo. Thank you for taking the time to write to me. Glad I got to answer your question. This is an interesting one. You know, people see that, uh, all that fight scene all the time and it asked me quite a bit, um, you know, would that have really happened? I don't believe it would. In the, if you think about it, in the original scene, the first thing that happens is that Tyrannosaurus Rex grabs that Spinosaurus by the neck. To me, the fight would have been over right then and there. Those two dinosaurs, with the bite force of Tyrannosaurus, he just, he would have snapped that neck off of that poor Spinosaurus, and that would have been the end of it. But to make the movie exciting, and I understand that, they, they added some drama to it. If Tyrannosaurus Rex and Spinosaurus were to fight, um, certainly Spinosaurus would have used his claws on his hands as a way to defend himself because they were certainly very powerful weapons. I don't know if he would have grabbed Tyrannosaurus Rex using his mouth and tried to pin him down. I, I just I just don't know, Hugo. I'll tell you, um, these are such gigantic dinosaurs that, man, it would have taken an unimaginable amount of strength to just pin either one of them to the ground just because of their mass. So would that have happened? Brother, I just don't know. It made for an interesting shot, though, in the movie, didn't it? All right, let's keep going. Uh, who is this? This is Sean from Bernie, Texas. I was just there the other day. I am a 16-year-old junior in high school, and lately I've been seriously thinking on what career... Uh, I'd like to be in since I was two and I got my first dinosaur toy. The problem is that I've looked online on how to become a paleontologist, but I have no idea which college or university I should apply to. Any suggestions for me? Sean, I get this a lot. Number one, I'm very excited to hear that you're interested in becoming a paleontologist. I think it's an exciting field and I hope you do it. Now, as for your choice in college, um, a lot of it has to do with what part of paleontology you want to do. Paleontology, even though it's a relatively small science, and small I mean that just there's not tens of millions of people involved in it, um, even though it's a relatively small science, it's, it's got tremendous varieties of things you can do in it while you're there. I mean, you can specialize in studying fish. You can study dinosaurs. You can study only theropod dinosaurs. You can study only the ceratopsians. You can, uh, you can become a paleo artist. You can be somebody who goes out in the field and does the field work. So it's so vast. But I would just tell you this, that there are so many good universities that have great college courses. But for myself, because we're here in San Antonio, um, I, I clearly have a very strong preference to Texas Tech University, which is in Lubbock, which is still in Texas. It's not in San Antonio. But Texas Tech is an incredible place. It has a great paleontological group. That's a good place to go. University of Maryland, simply because if you're lucky enough to be in one of his courses, you should really want to take a course um, that's presented by Dr. Tom Holtz. Uh, Dr. Holtz is one of the nicest people in the industry, but he's also unbelievably knowledgeable. So that would be a good place to go. And then um, if I were going to college today and would figure out where to go, boy, it'd be a toss up between there or uh, in, um, uh, oh my gosh, where does Dr. Larry Whitmer teach? Good grief. In the University of Ohio. The University of Ohio, yeah. He's at the University of Ohio, right? Right, he's not at Ohio University, he's University of Ohio. That also has a very, very strong, good, positive paleontological course. That's a good place to go as well. But for me personally, if I were to do it, man, it'd be hard not to want to go to, uh, it'd be hard not to want to go to uh, uh, Texas Tech because simply because I think they got a great program. All right, let's see Zachary from Pickering, Ontario, Canada. Hey George, it's me, Zachary, and I was wondering, can 
Miragia move its spines in the same fashion as Stegosaurus is rumored to. I've come up with a theory that they can lie them flat as a means of protection from side to side, and then when the attacker is gone, the animal erects them back to normal. Thank you so much for accepting my friend's request on Facebook. Happy to have you as a friend, and I'm pleased that you like my artwork. Thanks again. Okay, Zachary, first of all, Facebook. I am thrilled to have you as a friend on Facebook. If any of you want to become friends on Facebook, Look me up under George Blassing, B-L-A-S-I-N-G. There is a Dinosaur George fan page, but honestly, my time is so limited, I just very rarely have a chance to do anything with that. I use the one that's my personal one. So, uh, Zach, let's get back to that uh, that that really cool Stegosaur. Mirage, if some of you haven't seen him, he's got a large number of spines versus the typical Stegosaurus. So is it possible that he could move those? I don't know. I've never studied this dinosaur. I don't know if he can or not. I will tell you this, looking at the tail spikes of, of Stegosaurus, they don't, to me, suggest any ability to move from side to side. In fact, I think that would have a negative impact because I think it wouldn't make them as stable. So if you're swinging a club, you don't want the end of the club to be able to move because you don't get the same force in it. So if Mirage had the ability to move those those uh, uh, those spines on the side of its its body, I don't know how rigid he could hold them if he were under attack. You see what I mean? Um, I, I don't know how stiff he could hold them. And the worst thing would be for a predator to simply be able to come over and sort of push the spine out of the way to attack him. Does that does that make sense to you, Zachary? I hope it does. So in my opinion, I don't think he could do that. I think they would have been held a little more rigid simply from a defensive um, point of view. All right, let's jump down here to the bottom of the page and let's see. This is, uh, looks like Pitar from Zagreb, Croatia. Hello and welcome back, Dinosaur George. Pitar, so great to be, and I, I hope it's, P it may be pronounced Peter, just with an A-R instead of E-R. It's P-T-A-R. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing it cor correctly, but buddy, I hope I am. But listen, thank you so much. It's good to be back. I wish, again, I wish I had more time I could do more of these. My question is, how do scientists explain pictures of live dinosaurs on 900 burial stones found in Nazca, Peru? Many scientists say that they actually coexist together. I'm sorry for bothering you and thank you for reading this. It's an honor to talk to you. Listen, buddy, you're not bothering me in the least. And if anybody is honored, it's me that you would take time out of your day to, to send me your question. It means a tremendous amount to me and I'm honored that you and, and all of the people that write to me take the time to do that. Okay, how is it possible? Man, this is a great question because nobody knows. The thing that I love about paleontologists is that, in paleontology, is that we don't have all the answers. And there's a lot of mysteries, and I like that. I don't like to walk around thinking we know everything in the world, so therefore there is no mystery left. This is a perfect example. How are there pictures of what appear to be dinosaurs on these burial stones? I don't know, man. I don't know. Is it possible that dinosaurs existed beyond the end of the Cretaceous? Now, I don't mean birds because we all understand modern birds are avian dinosaurs. I'm talking about the dinosaurs we think of when we say dinosaurs. Is that possible? As a scientist, you should never simply close the door and say nothing is impossible. Uh, I mean, nothing, everything is, is, is impossible. I don't agree with that. I think that we should leave the door open at least to, if nothing else, just to, uh, uh, to, to cause people to, to uh, think things, challenge things. If we simply believed everything we read, well, there wouldn't be many books written because we will have already believed we have all the answers. I like challenging ideas. I like that. Now, I have never seen any evidence whatsoever that would suggest that dinosaurs live beyond the end of the Cretaceous. But I would tell you this, my friend, it's certainly possible. I wish I knew. Let's always go back and think about the discovery of um, the coelacanth where, um, you know, people were saying it's impossible that the coelacanth exists. And then lo and behold, we find them. All right, let's see. Uh, this is from Mary from Seattle, Washington. Why was Spinosaurus so big? P.S. I love Jurassic Fight Club. Mary, that's very kind of you. Glad you liked it. That's very nice of you to say. Why was Spinosaurus so big? When dinosaurs grow to large proportions, it has to do with a couple of things. Number one, the availability of a food source. 
Number two, the availability of all resources, not just food, but water. But number two, the availability of uh, oxygen to be able to supply their mass. And finally, why do they reach gigantic heights? It has to do with survivability. For instance, if you're giant like a sauropod, you, you basically have a very safe life in that most animals won't attack you because you're so big. So size is very beneficial to them. Size was beneficial to them because it allowed them to reach up higher into the trees and therefore have access to more food. Um, with Spinosaurus, it's basically the same thing. The bigger you are, the more well defended you can be. You may be so big that just your size alone may be a deterrent, but it also means that in changing weather, your large body mass would be an effective way to stay warm. If Spinosaurus is a dinosaur that hunted in the water, it's certainly possible that he needed that large mass to be able to maintain his heat. Think about this. Walruses are gigantic because they have that layer of blubber. It doesn't mean Spinosaurus has it, and I'm not suggesting he does, but I'm just saying that's certainly a possibility is that his heavy muscle mass may have been something that would have helped this dinosaur stay warm when he's in the water. And maybe that's why he reached that giant size. All right, let's answer one more, and then uh, I will try to get to more of them later on this week if I can. All right, let's just jump into, let's jump into this one right here. Who is this from? This is from Raymond from London in the United Kingdom. Hey there, DG, hope you're having a good day. I am Raymond, hope you are too, my, uh, my London brother. Um, my question is probably one that you've got a ton of, but was Tyrannosaurus rex a scavenger? Thank you very much for your time, Raymond. Hi, uh, Raymond. Yeah, you know, um, I do get this a bit, and in my opinion, he was not. Initially and most, um, most of his life, I think this dinosaur is made for hunting. All of the evidence that I've seen suggests he is. His skeletal design suggests that he is. His sheer body mass suggests that he can't survive on simply hoping that enough dinosaurs have dropped over dead within walking distance. When we think of the late Cretaceous, it's not like like you see in the movies where you look outside and you see 40 million dinosaurs all walking together. A Tyrannosaurus rex may go three or four or five days in his life without ever getting close to another dinosaur. Um, so, so keep in mind, dinosaurs weren't more prolific than, than modern animals. If Like, you got, you're in London. Um, let's say if you lived in Canada or, or Texas, for that matter. We go outside and we see a deer, white-tailed deer, but you don't see tens of thousands. You just see them every once in a while. Well, that's kind of the way the Cretaceous would have been with other dinosaurs. You would have seen one now and then. If we could travel back in time, we wouldn't step off the time machine and be trampled by a herd of dinosaurs. Now, it's true that some of them did travel in big herds, but they traveled, which means they probably didn't stay in one spot. So, Number one, Tyrannosaurus rex can't simply hope enough things die around him. And then number two, his body's not made for simply eating something that's dead. He's got recurved teeth. That means the teeth point backwards. Those are only useful in holding on to something that's attempting to get away. So when I look at all of his features, the uh, his eyesight, the positioning of his eyes on his skull, uh, the length of his legs comparative to his body, to body size, I say all the evidence suggests that this dinosaur is actually made for hunting. All right, I am about to leave on an 11 day uh, speaking tour, but I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my camera and I'm gonna shoot a couple of more of these while I'm in the hotel room. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer more of them. If you've got a question again, go to my website. Uh, hopefully I can answer you when you write to me. For everybody, I appreciate the courtesy. It makes the world a better place for all you young people. Practice your reading because that's what old people do. We tell young people what to do. Ah, oh, it feels good to be old. I can tell you guys what to do now. So there you go. All right. Also, get a haircut and turn your radio down. <laughs> my God, I just turned into my father. All right. Anyway, it's been good talking to you guys again. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope I answered your questions. I'll talk to you all soon. Later.